Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now in the last episode, we finally unlocked our first competitive PVM moneymaker. With the completion of Monkey Madness 2, we finally unlocked Demonic Gorillas, which means we can finally profit from Slayer and from Combat, which is a direction we definitely need to start moving in. Old School RuneScape obviously has a variety of moneymakers that are good, but almost all of the premier moneymakers are PVM related, which means we 100% need to start working towards them, as they are way too good to ignore. Okay, so although we have unlocked Demonic Gorillas, um, there's a couple things I definitely need to do first to make the task bearable, otherwise I'm going to definitely hate my life. The most important thing is simply going to be to get a Black Demon task. Now, although they can be done off task, uh, I'm not going to do that. Black Demon tasks are pretty chunky and pretty easy to get. Now, luckily for me, the task that Neve, or I guess now Steve, will assign is really, really low because I haven't completed Dragon Slayer 1, I haven't done Elemental Workshop, Fossil Island, I only have like 10 tasks that can be assigned from Steve, with one of those actually being blocked. So we should have about a 1 in 10 chance of getting Black Demon, so really this shouldn't take too long. Okay, first task, Kurasks. That's an interesting one. Currently we actually don't have access to it, and I thought it was going to be annoying to get to, but I overlooked one really simple way to get there. Now because we've been pushing our way north into the Troll Kingdom, we've actually unlocked a really quick way to get to the Fremenic Slayer dungeon, and it's only going to require one chunk. We have about 3 mil in the bank, which is enough for another item. We're going to buy the Serpentine Visage, about a 2.5 mil item. Can't do anything with it, we already actually have the Helm, so that's just going to go in the bank. But most importantly, that will unlock us this very important chunk. I don't know if I've actually ever taken this path before. It's not that uncommon, I guess, but I've just never taken it. Now, instead of going up north to the Troll Stronghold, we can actually just follow this path down to the west, which actually leads us right into the chunk that has the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon in it. The only concern I had is whether we could actually get over this rock pile, and we can, so we are good to go. Now, the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon actually has a couple main monsters I hadn't had access to before now, mainly Kuras and Turoths. But thanks to this unlock, we can now safely do those tasks. I forgot how good Karas actually are with the Leaf Bladed Battle Axe, such a cheap weapon, actually has really good DPS, and the drops from Karas are actually good, probably making about 300k, 400k per hour. Probably my best Slayer task right now beyond, well, Demonic Gorillas of course, but we can't even really do those yet. Ooh, drop trade, what's going on here? Or maybe a bait. Ah, the Sisterwood Sanctuary. I can't believe I forgot about this location. My whole Entrana smuggling strategy. Turns out it wasn't necessary, but it was cool. It was cool for the video, so it was worth it. Turns out we could have come down here that entire time. There's four Greater Demons down here I've never heard of in my life, but, well, we know about it now, so Greater Demon tasks will be much better. So I haven't been hard grinding the Hallowed Sepulcher, but every once in a while I'll do a couple hours here and there, and it is added up slowly. There's 91 agility, only one level to go until we've unlocked the most important thing from the skill. That's Hallowed Sepulcher level 5, coming up really soon here once we just do another uh, 20 hours or something. Not too rushed on this though, we have a lot of other stuff on the go as well. Ah, uh, there we go, finally! Actually, that didn't take that long. 160 demonic gorillas. I'm really excited to start killing these things, but this is actually only the first of three things we have to get done before we can even remotely efficiently kill them. Okay, we have two main problems left. Firstly, our range level really low. We have to at least get a blowpipe, which means we need to get five more range levels, which we have a pretty good plan for that. And the second one, we have to imbue our Black Mask. Right now, it will only give us the boost for our melee combat style, but we 100% need it for ranged as well. So we need to imbue our Black Mask as well. So we kind of scrapped together everything we could sell in our bank, all our random Slayer loot, Hallowed Sepulchre loot, and that's brought us up to about 4 mil nearly, which we're going to invest right back into ranged. Luckily, Red Chinchampas are really cheap. We're going to go ahead and buy a couple thousand of them right now. And you probably know where we're going with this. We're going to take it to our new best range training method, and the best one really in the game, the Monkey Madness 2 Tunnels. 
This was obviously part of the reason I wanted to complete Monkey Madness 2. Chinning these things down here is incredible range experience per hour, and although we only need a few levels for now, my plans for the near future involve us getting quite a few range levels, and having access to this was pretty key. Yeah, look at that, nearly 500k per hour with only 70, well almost 75 ranged, and we don't even have the best gear, we don't have an anguish, we don't have a twisted buckler, I mean this could even be improved more. But we only threw like half the chinchillas and we're already up to 75 range, which means we can now use the toxic blowpipe, which we conveniently already have in the bank. Okay, so we did a little bit of Nightmare Zone, um, we're gonna actually refund our salve amulet, I kind of prematurely imbued that, it's not actually that useful. So we're gonna take those points back and use them instead to imbue our black mask, which is much more important. And with that, I think we have pretty much everything ready to go to kill some demonics. I just realized I called these things chinchillas a few times. We're gonna sell these chinchampas back and we're gonna use that money to purchase a bit of gear, not expensive gear for like our collection, but just some things that will help us kill demonic gorillas. For example, we're gonna buy ourselves a Varax plate skirt, a dehyde body, and probably we're gonna need a tentacle whip. Now the best in slot weapon to kill these things is arc light, but unfortunately I can't get that for a long, long while. Not only do we have to complete some things in the desert to unlock dark light, but to get arc light we need to go to the catacombs, so we got to go all over to unlock that weapon. It's not realistic for a long time, which means we're gonna have to make do with something else. And probably the best alternative is just gonna be the tentacle whip. Now I do technically have an abyssal whip, but I'm actually just gonna buy another one to use the tentacle on because it's gonna be really confusing and I don't want to break a weapon in my collection, that would just be, that would just mess things up a lot. So we're gonna buy ourselves a second whip, use the tentacle on it, and we'll use that instead. Okay, I think we're all ready to go, I'm so excited, we have all the gear we need, we're just bringing a one item range switch right now. We don't have any Zenlite jewelry, so we're just gonna use the Fury, we're gonna switch into the blowpipe, we're gonna see how this works, but I haven't done these in quite a while. Okay, we're getting the hang of these again. Probably the most annoying part is switching my prayers. I don't have piety, which means you have to put on two prayers offensively for melee. Uh, maybe I'll stop bothering with that if I would just want this to be more AFK. First demonic kill coming in for eh, some rune items, not bad. Oh, there it is, the first item. Not the one we want, but Ballista Springs, um, about 150 kills into the task. Honestly, Zenites obviously are the main point we are here, they're worth 9 mil right now. But the basic loot is not even half bad, and we're leveling up our combat stats at the same time, so overall this task is really good, assuming you can deal with how annoying it is. Okay, so we're pretty much done with our demonic gorilla task, but we actually just got a slayer level from that last kill, 72, which means we've actually unlocked skeletal wyverns. Luckily, I can't get them assigned unless I've done elemental workshop, which, uh, yeah, we're not gonna do for a minute. Now we've had the City of Darkmire unlocked for quite a while, but there's one moneymaker there I have not tried yet, and I think it's time to give it a try. Darkmire has so much to offer honestly that I've still gonna be months until I've tried it all out, but the moneymaker I wanna try now is actually stealing from Vyres. Stealing from any of the Vyres in Darkmire actually gives you a chance of getting a blood shard, and not just one, two of them, assuming you have the rogue's outfit, which we do. But although we have Darkmire unlocked, we don't have a high enough thieving level, to steal from them. We need 84 and right now we're at 76. Now I think the best way to start leveling up thieving is to steal from the Knights of Ardoin. Not the best XP in the game but pretty decent and I already have the location unlocked so it's perfect. Okay there is 78 thieving. That's actually a really interesting level. It's unlocked probably my favorite thieving method in the entire game. Probably one of the most low effort training methods in the game and it's located in Dorgish Khan. Now the Dorgish Khan city has a lot of weird things in it, most of them not that useful, but the Dorgish Khan rich chests are actually really good. It's the way I leveled up thieving on my main account for a long time, and that's what I'm gonna do here as well because just recently we unlocked this city, and I think it's finally time we take advantage of it. So each world you have access to two Dorgish Khan rich chests, and each time you steal from one, you get a whopping 650 thieving experience and some loot. Essentially all you do is steal from two of them, hop worlds, and repeat that over and over again. You can get upwards of 200k per hour, I think even more than that, while being really low effort compared to most thieving methods. And this is honestly what I'm gonna do all the way to 84 and maybe even a bit higher, just because it's so chill. Okay, so there's 82 thieving. 
Wait a second. <laughs> okay, I definitely misread that. So we've actually unlocked Vyres already. Okay, interesting. Okay, well, I guess we're done. That was uh, way quicker than I was anticipating. You know, I was just having way too much fun. I was a little sad I was going to leave her early, so I decided to stay here for another two levels. There is 84 Thieving. That unlocks, uh, well, nothing, really. But to be fair, it's actually not really recommended to even steal from Vyres right away because the fail rate is so high that you really want as high Thieving level as possible. But uh, I'm excited. Let's just go try them out. Okay, so we're going to start our trip from the Hallowed Sepulchre Bank, actually. Pretty convenient bank. We're going to bring some dodgy necklaces, our full rogues outfit, and some food. Now ideally, I would have done the Ardoin Diary, the hard one, but there's no way I can do it right now. There's too many requirements that require you to go into chunks I don't have unlocked yet, so I unfortunately just can't realistically do that yet, which means our profit per hour will take a bit of a hit, but I think this is still worth doing. Now Vyres have a 1 in 5,000 chance of dropping a Blood Shard, and if we hit that roll, we're gonna get two of them thanks to the Rogue's outfit, so you're getting roughly one every 2,500 thieves. Now at absolute max efficiency, you can get about 700 pickpockets per hour, but I'm not 99 thieving, I don't have a thieving cape, and I don't have the diary done, which means we're gonna get much, much less than that, maybe closer to three to 400, which means hitting the drop rate is gonna take at minimum 10, 15 hours, but uh, I'm hoping we get it earlier. Regardless though, this is actually a really good thieving training method and will be just a good way to level up the skill while hopefully making some money. Okay, well, I didn't expect to get this far into leveling Thieving with the Blood Shard, but there is 90 Thieving. We've already gotten 6 levels, no Blood Shard yet. We are, I think, 7,000 pickpockets in. So we're a bit over the drop right now, and we're hoping to get one soon. This one is definitely a Feast or Famine moneymaker. Either you get lucky, you get 6 Blood Shards in a day, or you get none for a week, which is... We're kind of looking like the latter, unfortunately. Oh, we got it, finally. Oh, that took a long time. Okay, we actually got two blood shards. I was freaking out there for a second. I always worry that I forgot a piece of my rogue's outfit. We're good though, we got the drop, finally. We were here for like a full week, kind of passively doing this. Because we are low thieving level and we don't have the diary, we're only getting about 120k per hour thieving experience, which is almost half of what you could theoretically get. But all I really wanted was to get one blood shard drop and we finally got it. So although this took probably like 20 hours, maybe even more, I can't even, wasn't even counting, we did get 11 mil from it, just from the blood shards, but on top of that we also got some basic loot in cash, which we'll go ahead and sell off. So here's all the loot from just the Vyres, we got about 2 mil cash, a bunch of blood and death runes, and a bunch of gems as well, bringing us about 15 mil in total. Now on top of that we also have a bunch of kind of odd loot from stealing from the Dorgishkon chest and some blood pines. I don't know, we'll sell all this junk off. Well, I guess we'll sell it off slowly. Top of that, we're gonna liquidate our Hallowed Sepulchre tab, and after selling all of that, we're actually up to nearly a 20 mil cash stack, which is quite nice. Uh, it was quite a bit of effort though. Oh, forgot, we have even more loot to sell off. Our Demonic Gorillas tab has a bit of loot in there as well. Actually, just a lot of loot in the bank, it's all adding up. Oh, we got it, yes, 20 mil on the Trader Steve account. Absolutely beautiful, but uh, we're going to be spending this yeah, right now, actually. So although Demonic Gorillas was my first stepping stone into higher tier PVM, that is only one Slayer monster that we can do semi-sporadically, but one PVM moneymaker we're really close to is actually God Wars. God Wars is going to be difficult because we need better gear for it and higher levels, but we are technically only one chunk away from it, which means we're really, really close. And then we can just start trying out some of the God Wars bosses. The ones I'm really excited to try, Ceridomen, because I think we can do it with a crossbow, solo, pretty easily. Zamrak, Bandos, Armadillo is going to take longer till we can really comfortably do it, but I think Ceridomen's doable even with some less than ideal gear. But with that said, 
I think we need to level up our range level significantly to really have a shot at doing it. We're 75 range right now. I would like to get at least 85 maybe even higher so we're gonna have to invest a good chunk of this 20 mil into just leveling but as i've parroted quite a few times investing in levels is usually much better than investing in gear with that said though we're gonna invest into some gear <laughs> there are some exceptions and the necklace of anguish is a really strong upgrade for chinning in particular this bad boy is only 10 mil right now which i think is a really good deal and is our first piece of zenite i'm really excited a really expensive upgrade but definitely worth it we get range strength from it more accuracy, our max hit will be higher with the Chinchapas, and of course, that will allow us to unlock a very important chunk. That has unlocked God Wars, and there's so much to do in this chunk. Probably one of the biggest ones we've unlocked in a while. In it, we get five potential God Wars encounters, with Nex actually being locked off right now, I thought you could actually unlock Nex right away, but you actually require Desert Treasure 1, which we can't do yet. But we still get Ceridome and Zamrak, Bandos, and Armadil, which means that's a, a mad value chunk. God, what do I have to put the condom on every single time? So we have our Anguish, we got our Odium Ward, and the rest is simply just prioritizing Prayer Bonus, because honestly, range accuracy doesn't matter that much. That's why we have to have this stupid miter on. So we have 10 mil left, and we're actually going to invest into another item, the Ring of the Gods, which is going to maximize our prayer bonus. We can always make a bit more money, but saving money on Chinchampas and prayer potions will be quite nice, and the Archer's Ring doesn't really do much for us. So I thought we'd get a second upgrade before we really start grinding that range, because we're going to do a lot of it. So we're going to go ahead and imbue this bad boy. 650k points will do that. God damn it. Well, now this thing's not nearly as good. Apparently we need the Holy Wrench, which I, oh man, I haven't done this for so long. Okay, we are going to have to rock an unimbued Ring of the Gods for quite a while. Damn it. Honestly, I probably shouldn't have bought that. I regret that. Anyway, we can still buy a significant amount of Chinchampas. We're going to go ahead and buy 5,000 for now. Now, of course, by purchasing the Ring of the Gods, we have unlocked, once again, another chunk. And the one we're going to be unlocking is the Varrock Western City chunk. This has a couple of quest locations in it, as well as a couple other useful things like the Cook's Guild, one of the closest anvils to a bank. But the main thing this chunk signifies is the start of a new journey. We've finished unlocking Mortania, we've uh, finished unlocking Demonic Gorillas, God Wars, so this unassuming chunk actually is the start of a new long-term goal that we're going to be revealing in the next episode, but uh, guesses? Anybody? There is 80 ranged. Uh, actually didn't take very long at all. This method is so quick. So how far will 5,000 chinchillas get us? All right, looks like we're just gonna get a bit past 83 range, which is already a massive DPS increase, getting eight range levels. I honestly forgot how quick this method is, and not that expensive at all. That was only five or six mil for all those range levels. I think we're gonna go higher. Now, obviously, you don't wanna go all the way to 99. That doesn't really make that much sense because then all the extra range experience you get from just doing the boss is wasted. But I'm thinking maybe 90 would be a good level to go to. And Sinister Keys are really good. Uh, it's kind of strange to think that this is maybe my best money-making method right now, at least GP per hour wise. No experience though, so we're not going to do this too often. So we did a couple rounds of Sinister Keys, only took about half an hour, and we made another 800k, which is really good for the time investment. That leaves us off with about 4 mil, which we're going to invest right back into ranged training, another 4,000 red chinchampas. Uh, which I don't think will get us all the way to 90, but should take a decent chunk out of it. Okay, so it looks like it actually brought us to 86 range, which would be, I think, decent enough, but, but honestly, Red Chinchampas are so cheap, it might just be worth it to make a bit more money just to finish off 90, just to have the best shot at killing some God Wars dungeon bosses, because our gear is not going to be ideal. 
Okay, it's that time of the month again, guys. Bit of runecraft training. We don't do it too often, but here and there I'll go and do like a full level or two. We're actually about to hit a pretty big milestone though. 80 runecrafting. All pretty much done recently on blood runes. We did pretty much the entire level from 79 to 80 and we got 7 mil worth of blood runes, which is crazy. 36,000 of them. I do not believe it. We've actually done it. We've done another level in a single month. Two levels in a month. That's uh, kind of psychotic. There we go. 81 runecrafting. Really, really slow training. Only getting about 20 to 25k per hour. With Abyss Blood runecrafting. We could, of course, do it in Darkmire, but we need one important upgrade still. The Lunar Spellbook. But the cool thing is we would actually have access to the high tier agility shortcut. Because our agility is so high, which means we're actually pretty close to getting a 2 mil per hour runecrafting training method, which is incredible. We just have to do some more quests. Oh my god, look at that. 54,000 blood runes. We even went a little bit past 81. A solid runecrafting grind, but it's gonna pay off because we're getting another 10 mil cash stack just from this, and that's gonna bring us 15 mil in total. More than enough to get 90 ranged and then some. But firstly, we'll just go ahead and buy ourselves the chinchilla, chompas, god damn. The chinchompas we need, and uh, we'll see what we have left after that. There we go, guys. 90 ranged. Really didn't take that long at all. Ranged is now our highest combat stat. And I think we are now more or less ready to take on our first God Wars dungeon boss, Zilliana. So I've actually been waiting to get this agility level for a while. My plan was to get it in an entirely different episode when I would have more time to give it a bit more focus, but I'm just too excited. And on the horizon, we actually have so many good money makers that we're going to be unlocking, so I don't think we have time to wait too much longer. We've finally done it. 92 agility, which is such a big level. Finally, we have access to the Hallowed Sepulchre Floor 5, which is where we can finally get the chance at getting the Ring of Endurance. Which means now we've unlocked the best agility, training method, and money making method in the entire game. Which can now get us up to 2 mil per hour while training agility. So, so good. So we've unlocked that training method. We've unlocked God Wars. We've unlocked the Demonic Gorillas as a money maker. Our high tier runecrafting training method isn't that far away. And we've set in motion a new long term plan to unlock one of the best money makers in RuneScape. So there's so much to look forward to, but we're going to have to leave that to the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you in the next episode. Now, before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aliandra, Mitch Rinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. Also, thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.